That's the kind I want. I think so. I do too. Yeah, just a piece of So I can actually see it. Yeah, I accidentally put wrong stuff. Oh, oh, it's not even the right name. We can switch it up. <laughs> okay, so wait. Oh, you we don't even have the right lyrics. It's okay. not come, come, you think. Oh. We can switch it up. Uh, 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 yeah. What is it? We're doing come, come, you think. Oh. Okay, just well, ignore no. what I put on there. Just don't mess well, it up. Well, we only have this one. That was our plan, and then I'm like, oh, I'll print it. We'll just rid it off. Okay, it was an oops. So, are you doing come, come, you say? Yes. Uh, one of the gentlemen was just. Does everyone have a phone? It was me trying to do too many things at Well, I'll just say right now the opening hymn. Oh, yeah. Opening hymn. Come and see. Hymn number 30. I have a Bluetooth mode on the speaker that I don't know about, so if you'd like to connect your phone to it, you're more than welcome to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you ready? Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome.
See all the pretty flowers? Which which? Why is there flowers on the bottom? Because it's uh, <coughs> Grandma likes flowers, so that helps me remember. That Grandma likes flowers. She loves flowers. Yeah, they can't see, and I don't right there. see here. Do you want to sit over here, Mary? You can come and sit here. Do you want to sit right there? Your cousins. Your cousins. You can see cousins. Mary and Aunt Julie look. Mary. You want to sit right here? Oh, do you want to, you want me to have, I can... Jealous, Grandma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like there's just somebody that's <laughs> close to Grandma, and then I gotta figure out why I'm not in the right position. Oh, take a look. Six smile. Nice. There we go. Pretty girls.
The heart is very pretty. Hi. Hi. Hi, Harper. How are you? Good. Yeah. Yeah, friends, Harper. Oh, really? Oh, oh, this is where Harper. Is that the Harper, do you know about the marking booth? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know about the she marking booth? Maybe okay. you'll find out about the marking booth. send it to you. Yeah. Marking booth? Yeah. Marking booth. <laughs> marking booth. <laughs> If I'm smart enough to make this microphone work, we'll begin. I think the clock says three o'clock. What a pleasure to be here and to be able to help you participate in this program. I know our bishop uh, wanted to be here. He uh, had some other family responsibilities and couldn't make it. So, the kind family asked me if I'd conduct this program. Can you all hear okay? No? Uh, uh, do you want me to talk like this? Yes. Okay, the deaf folks are saying talk like this. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, we welcome you here and know that Nancy appreciates the effort that you've made to come today. And we're kind of praying that the weather will be good and all will be well while we're here won't have to hop out our umbrellas and so we want to thank you for being here thank you for the effort we'll begin our program by singing come come ye saints and if you don't have a phone you got to remember it or just fake the words okay and Stephanie Anderson is going to lead that, and uh, after we sing our song and get started, then Addie Anderson, a granddaughter, will give our opening prayer. So Stephanie, it's all yours.
Our dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful today that we are able to gather and remember Nancy, and we're grateful that we were able to know her and for all the people that she's touched in her life. Help us to remember her and to share her memories and to celebrate her life. Help comfort those who may be having a hard time and let us all remember all the wonderful things Nancy gave to us. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Now we're going to have a life sketch, and it will be given by Nancy's son, Eric. So, Eric, when you're ready, we're ready for you. Uh, thank you all for coming out today. <clears throat> um, I'm Nancy's oldest son. Um, I'm going to take my glasses off here. So Nancy was born November 20th, 1943, to Harold and Marcia Stoker in Hollister, California. And despite what your kids or grandkids shirts may say, you cannot surf in Hollister, California. <laughs> if you would like a nice strawberry or a nice head of lettuce, you can go pick those in one of the fields there. It's a, it's a, it's a farming community. It's, um, it's, a, it's, it's kind of quiet, but it's, it's, it's a nice place. Nancy lived there in, um, in Hollister until 1954 when she was in fifth grade. They lived across from a prune orchard, a prune and apricot orchard. Um, Nancy's father there was a, a, a teacher at the school. He taught um, agriculture. Um, and in 1954, the family moved to Carruthers outside of Fresno where they lived for th three years. And then after Carruthers, they picked up and they moved to Sonora, California, where Nancy graduated from high school. Stancy, Nancy was a letter carrier for the band, um, and what her t sisters tell me, I wasn't there at the time, was that Nancy was accident prone as a child. On her first week in Sonora, they were renting a house and she stepped right outside the step, or she missed a step and, and she broke her leg. Um, and she, while there, she was also um, on the ski team. And she goes up to ski at Dodge Ridge, and she gets an accident and breaks another bone. Um, the girls at one time also went horseback riding, and Nancy fell off the horse and broke her collarbone. But I don't know why she was so unlucky as a, a child, um, but she had a very positive outlook on life, and a, um, she was a, a, very, fun, a very fun person. Um, at school, she was, I guess it was a much different time. She was a president of the future homemakers of uh, America. I don't think they, they do that anymore, but, um, but, but my mother was, was very much um, described as um, someone that believed that the home was a very important place. It, and it was important to take care of her kids, her family, uh, her friends. Um, and she was, for her, it was important to think of other people at all times and she always came second anyone else always came first um, as a girl she always understand that she liked to wear flowers in her hair and a little funny story here is that um, when she was in eighth grade her she went on a double date with her older sister Anne to the movies I don't know what parents would allow them to do that but um, anyway so for college, Nancy went to BYU where she studied elementary education. Uh, and she had, her roommate was her, her first cousin, Vinette Perry. Um, funny story from college. Um, I remember my mom telling me that one night in the dorms, she was staying in Amanda Night Hall and they had curfews back in those days where they locked the doors and Nancy had a date and she was gonna get home late after the date. And so she arranged with some friends to stay at their house. And so she, you know, gets to the house in the evening, uh, you know, sleeps on the couch, leaves the thank you note in the morning later to find out it was some random boy's apartment. <laughs> but Nancy always got a big kick out of this, and uh, I heard this many times growing up. Um, but Na Nancy liked to have fun. She, um, she, you know, had a lot of boyfriends, um, Growing up, a lot, a lot of uh, she liked to have fun. A lot of um, with uh, um, 
anyway, uh, her various suitors. Um, at one point during her college education, she went down to San Diego State where um, she uh, stayed with a, 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 one of her boyfriend's sisters. And she took a class on poverty, and this class required Nancy to hitchhike. Couldn't, she couldn't drive a car, but she had to hitchhike. And um, so, so what I find interesting about this is Nancy wasn't a very shy person. She, you know, was wasn't afraid to ask anybody anything. For you know, she liked to ask. She was inquisitive about people. My friends, they'd come over to the house. She would grill them about their lives. She would grill her kids about their lives. Her in-laws, or whatever. She, you know, she. Um, anyway, she was, she, but she was genuine. Nancy was always genuinely interested in people. Um, after BYU, Nancy graduated, um, and she moved out to Menlo Park, California, where she taught elementary school for some seven or eight years. Um, in the ward, she was, from what her friend Judy Hasselbach tells me, the queen of uh, the social life. Um, Judy uh, was a new convert, and I guess. Uh, comes into the ward, and Nancy was her, her first friend that she met, met her at the door, and, and for many years um, would stay up with her. So my, my mom had many longtime friends, uh, and she kept up with them over over the years, uh, for friends that she met in her, her single life. Nancy was always the, on the go. She liked to plan and do things. And as an example of this, um, Jean, uh, she picks up Jean from, from school. Jean was coming out back to California, and Jean's expecting Nancy to take her down to Hanford to back to her, her parents' home, where they had since moved. But instead, Nancy had other ideas and took Jean water skiing with some, with some boy that she'd, uh, that she'd known. Um, <laughs> Nancy was very much like this. She liked to have a, liked to have a lot of fun. Um, in 73, she picked up and worked, went to Europe for five weeks, where they you know, traveled around and and w went to a lot of different places, Germany, France, Switzerland, England, um, uh, and, did and they did and saw a lot of things, and Jean could tell you a little bit about this. And when they arrived in London, um, this was uh, towards the end of their trip, um, Jean says to Nancy, well, what are we going to do now? And Nancy drops down her suitcase and looks over at Jean and says, Jean, I've been planning this whole time. Now it's your turn. <laughs> and so, so Nancy was very much a planner her whole, her whole time, very spontaneous, just like to go out and um, uh, do things uh, just, uh, just to experience them with friends and, and with, uh, with, with family and, and whatnot. Um, Sanf uh, Nancy was going at this time to the Stanford Ward for Church, uh, and Henry B. Irene just happened to be their bishop. Um, they uh, always got a kick out of telling me that they give a, gave a big birthday party for him um, for him one year. Um, towards the end of her time at our Stanford ward, Nancy uh, dated or met Paul Anderson, who, who is my father. And her friend tells me they got married in July 12th of 1974. And her good friend tells me that in December, the December before, they weren't dating. So I'm not sure um, how this quick... Uh, this quick romance happened, um, but my parents got married in, in, in the Oakland Temple. Um, and in the early years, my parents lived in, in Sunnyvale, California, and Grandpa and Grandma Anderson thought they were nuts for paying $45,000 for a house in Sunnyvale, but, um, but they bought this old, uh, this old fixer-upper and, and, and fixed it up, where we lived for seven years um, until about 1983. And this is, this is where I start to have memories of, of Nancy. It was, it was good times. Um, living in Sunnyvale, my mother was a was a great mother. Um, she took us to do a lot of things, to visit a lot of friends. I remember that there was an old um, there was a lady um, named Gertrude who uh, lived in, in a nursing home there, and my mother regularly took us to, to visit her. Um, despite as a child, um, my not enjoying it, but Nancy was very much into helping people, serving people at church, friends, uh, family. Um, as I said, she would always thought about other people. Um, Nancy's family, they lived within some, somewhere between 30 minutes to, to two hours drive of her, both her parents and her two sisters at the time. And so growing up, we spent a lot of time uh, visiting with them. Uh, we always uh, regularly had Thanksgivings in Hollister with Nancy's parents. 
Um, in the end of 93, uh, my parents picked up and moved to Morgan Hill. Um, and we lived at various houses in Morgan Hill. And, and my dad decided he eventually wanted to uh, build a house in, in San Martin. And my, um, that's, that's uh, where they were living when I graduated from high school. Um, Nancy had lots of friends from church. She, at the, at this, uh, when I was a teenager, she regularly had house guests. About twice a month, she would have folks over from, for dinner, whether they were missionaries, friends from church, my grandparents, sisters, um, you name it. Um, she uh, always made, I always looked forward to this because she, uh, the nice meal was always cooked. Um, and we, we helped her, but um, she, she, wor she worked very hard. Um, during the Morgan Hill years, Nancy was also very dedicated uh, to her church callings. She was a word missionary for um, a number of years and, and met and had some good friends from, from that. One story that I, I remember f uh, from that is during this experience, um, there was this family that, that was from a broken home. I think the mother was alcoholic and you know the, 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 the parents you know barely could keep onto a job. And I remember my mom spending a lot of time helping them, having me go over and babysit them. And you know, I, I, my mom wasn't, um, she wasn't superficially interested in helping people because it was like a church calling, but for her, it was very important that um, she had a genuine love for people, um, but, um, just random people. So I, I remember this one story. Um, when I was a senior in high school, Nancy was a word missionary, and she was out with her uh, companion, Cheryl Vess, who has uh, been a longtime friend for her, and they're driving down Watsonville Road, and they're, they're driving down, and they see this car go in the other direction, and Cheryl says, hey, Nancy, isn't that your car? And Nancy says... Oh my gosh! That, that I guess she says that is our car. So they turn around, and, they, and this was this was uh, on a school day, by the way. So they turn around and they catch up with this car, and they pulled up next to her. And my sister is in this car, <laughs> driving this truck, skipping school to go to the beach, and she gets caught by my mom, uh, caught by my mom in the middle of the school day. And so what does Nancy do? Nancy lets them go to the beach. So she was there with her friends. So this was. I guess the kind of mom that Nancy was, you know, catches her, her daughter doing something that she probably, you know, Emily got good grades. Um, <clears throat> she caught her doing something she did and still, you know, let her do it. I, I, got, I was a little uh, upset at the end of the day when I couldn't find the car in the school parking lot. But, but my mom very much um, believed in fun and, um, and, keeping, and keeping care of the f family anyway. Um, so another thing that I remember about my mom is she was very much into gardening. She loved to have a beautiful home. She loved to have a beautiful yard. And I remember her getting up very early in the morning uh, during the summer to like for five hours to, to, to work on just various gardening things. And it was very important for her. And um, the, the, the garden always, always looked, looked beautiful. It was, it was, um, um, it was I, I think it was therapeutic for my mom and um, that's one thing that she liked. Um, so let's, Nancy also liked to do um, a lot of traveling. She's even, um, you know, during our single, or I mean, even is a marriage, she liked to go to on family trips to Hawaii or, or whatnot to visit her friends and family, visit Anne and Jean. Um, um, around in 1999, my parents picked up and moved here to Mapleton. Um, where they uh, have, they've lived in a, a few houses here, and I think the the move was this tough for my mom because she went she grew up in California and it was you know, she didn't have some built-in social networks out here. Um, and to my understanding, um, my mom would go out her way to to you know meet people and invite people over um, for dinner or whatnot to to organize things. She volunteered at the um, I think the library to help teach kids to read. And she regularly did various other service activities because, as I mentioned, my mom always thought that, you know, everybody else was number one and just, you know, her priorities were always number two. That's one thing that I learned from my mother. Um, um, my father died in, in 2020. And somewhere, somewhere around this time, uh, or a little before it, Nancy started having Alzheimer's. Um, she started having memory issues. 
Um, and this was difficult on the family. Uh, this was difficult on the family. Um, it was difficult uh, because it's because when someone you love, I, you know, I didn't know much about this until I was early. Would, you know, you, you can see them and they don't know how to operate a dishwasher, or you say, "Mom, can you get the mozzarella cheese out of the fridge?" and they don't know what mozzarella cheese is. It's it's very heartbreaking. Um, and so for the last three plus years, Nancy suffered from Alzheimer's. Um, which had eventually um, took her life. A few of the nurses, so we had to check Nancy into an Alzheimer's center here. And that was a very hard decision on the family, on, on the sister, because, you know, everybody wants to take care of their mom and, and watch them. But we realized that this was a full-time job, and we figured that that, um, that professionals could do a better job than, than we could for the care that she needed. Um, but Nancy... Uh, and that's where Nancy stayed for, for the rest of her life, and, and um, we're grateful for the care that, that they provided. So Nancy was a devoted friend and mother. Um, she never she didn't have a mean bone in her body. Um, I've talked to some of her friends. I don't know anyone who said that Nancy has ever said a mean thing. One of her, fr a good friend of hers for a long time said, I've never heard Nancy say anything mean about anyone. I can't think of Nancy doing any trash talking about anyone. Nancy was genuine, uh, she was outgoing, she was willing to give and help people even when there was nothing in it for her. My mother was not shy, uh, she was always busy, she was always on the go, she always had something to do, whether it was someone to help, someone to serve, um, and, more, and, and also she also liked to have fun. Um, I miss my mother, um, um, and I, I'm really sad that she's passed, um, she was a great mom. I don't think I could, at least for me, I, could, I, I wouldn't, you know, trade my mom for, um, for anything. Um, and anyway, uh, Nancy, mom, um, we miss you. Um, and I say this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Eric. What a great, uh, review of her life that Eric was able to do. We're now going to be privileged to hear from a couple of sisters. And my understanding is that M no <laughs> Jane Johnson's going to be first. Well, we're going to do it together. Huh? We decided to do it together. Right. You're going to do it together? Together. together. Well, okay. Do you want the microphone over there? You're going to stand up here. Anyway, Jane Johnson and Vaughn Savoy, and they're going to tell us some memories. Hi, I'm Nancy's older sister, Anne, and I'm going to just tell you. Oh, can you hear me? I'm Nancy's oldest sister. In fact, I thought I'd be going before she, <laughs> she had. I'm just going to tell her some of the things that went on that her life and my life. Um, we, growing up, we shared a bedroom, and we did do some arguing and fighting. Oh, oh, closer. Okay, we did do some arguing and fighting growing up. You can hear. Later in life, um, we became um, good friends and became close. And I always thought Nancy looked cute in the clothes that she wore. She sewed and babysat and earned money for clothing. She had a very cute. She had a very cute jacket, and I, I was going to ditch day, and uh, so, I, um, I took the jacket, put it in my, well, put it in my suitcase and wore it to ditch day. Brought it home, put it back on the, you know, on the hanger, and uh, sometime later, I don't know how much longer, I told her what I did, and she says, "Oh, you can have the jacket." <laughs> anyway. Um, when Nancy was, oh, that's right, you already told her we can't go on with that. Get the next one. Okay. Um, Eric already told you about us dating, double dating. My, <clears throat> my family, and, and then also he told you about the horse. We, there was two horses and three girls. When Nancy broke her collarbone, there was two girls and two horses. We went up to this family that way up in the mountains. In fact, the kids, um, the high school, the kids that lived in, that were lived there, they, the, I don't know, the district or something gave them money for gas because the buses did not go that far away. So, um, 
uh, we both we both were pregnant with our daughters at the same time. Marcy and Emily were two months and a day apart, and Emily's daughter uh, uh, was, I think, the same. Two months and a day. Apart. Emily and Marcy's daughter. I mean, I can. <laughs> okay, my daughter was two months and a day older than Emily. Emily's, yeah, and um, and Emily's daughter was Lily. Two, Lily was two months and a day older than Greta. Greta, my Greta. And Marcy's daughter. Um, when the we took Eric and David and Emily and my daughter, and we went to use and. Nancy drove and we went to Disneyland and uh, one thing that happened <laughs> we, we, she got, we got the keys were locked in the car I don't remember how we got that what? I'll keep your mic up okay sorry <laughs> anyway the keys got locked in the car and um, then it was uh, Disneyland it was about 11 o'clock or so at night night and we could not find Emily and so I walked back to the hotel the motel and she had written a note and had gone to, she had climbed through the window, had written a note, and she went to bed. <laughs> and then we went to, um, oh, what is that? Universal Studios. Yeah, Universal Studios. And um, Nancy and I got off the bus to check on the Universal Studios, uh, what, you know, I don't want to find the price or where, to, how to get there or what. And on the bus, it was full of people, and Emily and Marcy got into a battle. And you know what? I'm going to have to ask Emily. I don't know, ever find out what they were fighting about. <laughs> and I thought you said they, that they rode off on separate buses from you. Oh, yeah. No, when we got to Universal Studios, we went on a tram. And Nancy and I were on this one tram, and the kids were on the other, waving to us as they went off. <laughs> anyway, and um, Paul, my husband, and I would go to Menlo Park on a Friday night. That's where Nancy lived. And we would uh, pick up um, um, Nancy and go to San Francisco for the night. And uh, there were a couple of times that Nancy would fix lasagna and we'd take my son, oldest son, to a ball game. She'd fix lasagna before we went to the ball game. That was really nice. Okay, this one. <laughs> um, there's, <laughs> uh, in, Tw it's either Tuolumne County, is it Tuolumne County or Calaveras County? It's a place called the Calaveras uh, Natural Bridges. And Nancy took my son, who was my, I don't know how old he was, and I don't know if he took both sons. And they went, and they went down to uh, Natural Bridges and went where they were going to go swimming. And there was a bunch of nudists down there. <laughs> and so Nancy told my son, he, she said, don't look at them, just turn your head. <laughs> um, we uh, we got together. I'm not sure when it was with with our, our cousins Carol and Karen, and that was Nancy, Jean, and I. And we went to Jean's cabin up at Bass Lake. We had the most wonderful time. It was non-stop talking. And then we went. Um, we all went to visit our aunt Vera, and um, our cousin Robin brought her sister down, Susan, to visit. And we had a wonderful time visiting. Um, they told you that they they gave President Irene a birthday party. He was their bishop. Um, uh, one thing that Nancy and Paul both did for me, I and Paul, my husband Paul, inherited lots and lots of of um, Swedish names to do temple work for, and um, they were so good at helping. It took me about six years to do all these back, things. Back up oh. to the <laughs> it took about six years. I'm not used to a microphone. <laughs> it took about six years to do all these temple names. Um, okay. I'm just going to kind of end this. And the 16th of May, 1992, my parents and sisters and I were sealed in the Oakland Temple for, as an eternal family. Nancy and I talked about when she died or when I, whoever went first, we would come through the other person. So if all goes well, she'll be coming for me someday. And I am so thankful that she was my sister, and I know I'll be with her again, and she'll be Nancy. Thank you.
You're not going to stay with me? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to begin by saying that uh, my birth was a disappointment to my sisters. Not me. Not I was told that me. Anne and Nancy cried when no, they learned they'd had another me. sister. <laughs> Nancy not cried because they wa Nancy wanted a brother, and I was another sister. Well, the three of us um, girls grew up in an ideal 1950s uh, family, and I should say there was another member of the family that was important to us, and that was our little dog Twinkle, that was there the whole time, year lived to be about 15 years old. <coughs> Dad Harold was a teacher and later a school administrator, and we had a stay-at-home mom, Marcia, who provided us three wonderful meals a day, dressed us in nice clothes, transported us to events, and saw to our health, educational, cultural, and social needs. We lived in comfortable homes in Prune Street in Hollister, Raider Street in Carruthers, and Summit Avenue in Sonora. And we were surrounded by loving grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, and many, 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 many family friends. Our parents had life, lifelong friends that were established during the Hollister years, and they formed a group called the Wild Ass Mining Company. <laughs> Throughout our parents' lives, we participated with this group and their children in such activities as camping trips, picnics, beach trips, birthdays, and weddings. As a parent, as a family, we mainly took our vacations to Ogden, Utah, where both my parents were from, on both the father and mother and father's side. One summer, Nancy and I were complaining that we had had no family vacation that summer. So our father took us to Lake Tahoe on a Sunday and then Virginia City for the day. Then one day, Lake Tahoe and Virginia City and said, there's your summer vacation. <laughs> well, my dad had three sisters and one brother who lived in California and we often spent Thanksgiving and Christmas with his sisters as they lived a drivable distance for us in Northern California. Father loved his sisters and of course we loved his sisters too. And I should say that Nancy was named for her Grandma Stoker because her middle name was Evelyn, and Evelyn was our Grandma Stoker's first name. I always looked to Nancy. She was a good example of being honest, hardworking, responsible, and she was overall a kind person. She developed from a chubby tween to a beautiful young lady who always looked gorgeous in her teen clothing. When Anne married and Nancy went off to BYU, I was left a lone child in the household. But as I grew older, I developed a closer relationship with Nancy. When possible, she tried to include me in her activities. I remember visiting her as a, uh, when she was a single teacher in the Bay Area, and she, we did fun activities like bicycling in Golden Gate Park, museums visits, and shopping in San Francisco. And one time, she invited me to a backpacking trip with the Stanford Singles Ward. We went up to Yosemite and spent the first night in a campground. <coughs> In the middle of the night, I heard a noise and woke up to find a bear staring at the foot of my sleeping bag. As I was sleeping next to Nancy, I practically jumped on top of her saying, Nancy, what do we do? And we both screamed and the bear took off into the woods. We woke other people up and they said, maybe you better put your backpacks in the car. So we did and the next morning we were assessing what had happened and the bear had made away with a canister of homemade chocolate chip cookies that had been in my backpack. Well, then we began our hike into the wilderness, and the, ne the next night we were caught in a big downpour with no cover. Someone gave Nancy and I a one-man tent, and we spent the rest of this miserable night crammed in a small space as the water kept slowly seeping in. Well, the next morning we got up, got by the fire, tried to dry out, and I tell you, we couldn't hike out fast enough that day. And we drove to Anna and Paul's house, who lived in Sonora. They did a barbecue dinner, and we tried to recuperate, recuperate from the whole experience. And needless to say, I never went backpacking again after that experience. When my parents moved to Hanford, Nancy had no friends there to visit. But when she was single, we spent Christmas vacation in Hanford. And when, when Christmas vacation, Nancy kept disappearing for hours at a time. I first thought she was shopping, but we later asked her, Nancy, where are you going? What are you doing? Nancy told us she went to the Hanford Hospital and asked the desk if there was any patient who had no family visiting and needed some Christmas cheer. The staff introduced Nancy to such a lady, and Nancy visited her several times every day. She was writing letters and reading to her and running errands for her. The lady trusted Nancy so much she even gave her the keys to the house to run errands for her. 
And this really showed, well, again, as Eric said, what a charitable spirit Nancy had all of her life. And when I completed college in 1973, Nancy and I took a six-week trip to Europe. And it's a good thing we did that year because the next year Nancy was married. So this was our window of opportunity to go to Europe together. We flew from Oakland to Amsterdam, and I remember being dazzled with Nancy as we left the Amsterdam airport and drove into to Amsterdam seeing all the bicycles and the canals and the Hort's historic building. We rented a car and traveled to many European countries, and we had no credit cards back then. Nancy had lots of cash because she was a teacher, and she got all her uh, money in German marks. Well, I was a struggling student and had much less money to spend, and I was worried I wouldn't have enough money to last the whole trip. But as it turned out, back then you really could travel on Europe on $5 a day. So I actually came home with $250, even though I didn't have to take that much money to give with. One of the places we visited was Salzburg. And one night after dinner, we were sitting in a park trying to decide what to do that evening. We heard beautiful music coming from a nearby building. There was a, a rehearsal going on. Nancy said, let's go in and listen. I said, well, that would be rude to interrupt the rehearsal. But as we were speaking, the group came out for a short break. And Nancy went over to who looked like the conductor and asked if we could go in and watch. He said yes, and we were treated to um, over an hour of glorious Mozart music performed by this choir and orchestra, free, but no charge. But when the rehearsal was over, we discovered someone had locked all the doors and in the rehearsal hall, and there was no way out of the building. After banging on doors, assessing whether we could climb out of the window, running up and down the stairs, someone finally was able to get a hold of a janitor to get us out of the, the, uh, the building. So anyway, and then, as I said, we went on to London, and uh, we had a really nice, we had a nice trip home, and it was, we had wonderful experiences for the being together to Europe. Well, my first job was in Wyoming, and after a year in this cold climate, I decided I wanted to find a job back in California so I could be near my family. And while I was job hunting, uh, Nancy said I could come live with her that summer. And it was the summer of 74, uh, the year that she was going to get married in July. So when, it, when her wedding day came, I did not go with the family to Oakland, but ra rather spent the morning at her bishop's house with the assignment of doing all the melon balls for the wedding. And Ma Nancy had bought lots of watermelon and honeydew and cantaloupe. And all morning long, I was making melon balls, melon balls, melon balls, and I was nowhere near getting through all this fruit. So finally, Nancy came back after the ceremony, and I thought, I'm not done, I'm not done. She brought some friends to help finish it up. Luckily, later that evening, one of my parents' friends jokingly asked why all the mel melon balls were so oddly shaped. But anyway, so when I think about Nancy's wedding, I always think about the melon balls. <laughs> After Nancy was married, I was happy to see Eric, Emily, and David join the family. And I would often visit them when I went to Hollister to visit my parents. One Saturday before Easter, Nancy and I went with her children hiking in the Pinnacles. It was a rainy weekend and there was crowds of people walking in the park, most of the trails in a one-way direction. We walked, walked into a cave and it turned out uh, there was only one way to get out of the clay, cave and that was to climb up a 20-foot wall or walk out through knee-deep water. Well, Nancy and her kids were all very agile, and they scrambled up the wall, and I thought, how am I gonna get out? But Nancy went and found a man to lean over the hole and pull me out. Otherwise, I couldn't get out of the cave. And I tell you, my heart was beating very fast by the time I got out of the cave that day. I never had a bow um, Well, I was gonna say, another, we had, as they mentioned, we had a cabin in, in Bass Lake, and Nancy brought the family we had adventures up at Bass Lake at our cabin, which we still have the cabin. And one time when the children were small, we first moved there, we had a, a, a bedroom on the basement. And to get to the bedroom from inside the house, you had to go through a door down through, in the, there was a, there was just a hole in the, in the uh, closet with a, a, a ladder going down to this, this other bedroom on the, on the ground floor. And we were going somewhere, and Eric and Emily come out, and they say, I said, where's Nancy? And they says, Mommy fell down. And I went in to check what Mommy had fallen down. She had fallen all the way. She had stepped back in that closet and had fallen away all the way from the first floor all the way down to the basement and could have killed herself except that the ladder broke her, her fall. But I said, the kids said, Mommy fell down. Well, she fell from the first floor down, the second floor down to the first floor, but she survived, thank him. Being accident, but she still survived. And, and not hurt, luckily. 
Um, Nancy, Ann, and I would always plan weekly sister weekends to such places as Carmel and San Francisco. And then Nancy moved to Utah after my parents passed away. And Nancy and Paul were very generous to allow Jim and I stay with them during the, the 2002 Summer Olympics. And Jim and I went to varied uh, events during the week. But our last event that we had tickets for was ice dancing, and Jim wasn't interested in that. So he said, Nancy, why don't you go with, with Jean? So we wanted to go early to Salt Lake to look at all the special uh, in venues before we went to the Salt Palace to see the program. And Nancy moved through things she was fast, hard to keep up with. And I was trying to keep up with her, and I tripped on the sidewalk and fell face down on the sidewalk and trying to catch my fall with my hand. And onlookers came and said, came around and said, you better go to the first aid station. So uh, anyway, I went over there and they said, you better take your ring off. Your hand's going to swell up. And they tried to bandage me up. And here I was, I was like, I told Nancy, I don't know if I can make it to the rest of the evening. I'm just feeling terrible. But Nancy said, let's go get some ibuprofen and maybe you'll feel better. So we stopped a bypasser to ask where a pharmacy was open on Sunday to make the purchase. And the lady said, uh, you want ibuprofen? And she opened up her purse and says, how much do you want? 200, 400, 600, 800 milligrams? And she handed the pills to me. And after I took them, I felt much better. And we went to the ice dancing and had an enjoyable time that evening. Okay, one of the family trips we took was to the big island of Hawaii. And we had a condo on the Kona side. And one day we decided to drive over to Hilo and visit Volcano National Park. It was suggested the best time to see the lava was in the evening, so we stayed until dark. And as the moon and stars came out, we found a trail to proceed towards the volcanoes. And we didn't have flashlights, but some people said they would walk along as they had flashlights. But somebody was too scared to get out of the car. I won't say who. Somebody was, while some other people, the attitude they took, they were going on cartwheels down towards the volcano. But we had, anyway. But we had a good evening, and uh, there's always different personalities in every family, that's for sure. Well, our last sister reunion was four years ago. I took the train, and Nancy flew to Reno to meet Anne at her house in Sparks. And the whole trip, Nancy thought she lost her suitcase during the flight, which she had not. Anne and I could see that Nancy was having issues, but we still had a nice time doing our traditional sister's activities. And at, after the end of the pandemic last summer, Nancy and I were able to go visit Nancy at the Ashford Memory Care. And although we're not sure if she recognized us, we still had a very loving visit. So in conclusion, Nancy has always been an inspiration to me. She has taught me honesty, how to treat my fellow neighbors, how to enjoy the best things in life, and how to be strong in my faith. And even though she's passed on to our next place in eternity, I will think of her every day and cherish all the things she meant to me as my beloved sister. I got her bow. We thank you, thank you, Anne and Jean. Now we have one more great speaker. She's going to make some more comments. Her daughter, Emily. So. Emily, would you come forth and make your comments? of her are somewhat clouded over by the last three years of her struggle with Alzheimer's. Sometimes it's hard to see past that. Watching her lose her memory and other abilities has been difficult. I think about the energy that she had before, always knowing, as we talked about. I was I sort of wonder if she was in a hurry to get as much done as she could in the time that she had here. I saw how she helped and served and worked constantly. She was a good example of 
when ye are in the service of your fellow beings, ye are only in the service of your God. I know my mom loved her Savior. She showed it through her life. Even though she lost her mental and physical capacities recently, she was still able to touch people's hearts through her spirit, which was not debilitated until the end of her life. She still loved to meet people and to let her sense of fun come out. She still loved to watch conference, even though many of the words may have lost to her. I'm sure her spirit was still being nourished. I know she loved our prophet, President Nelson. And I know if she was still here and without memory loss, she would be studying his words. I feel like I want to share his most recent counsel because I feel like she would have. Yeah. President Nelson told us to honor our Savior by being peacemakers, to love each other and avoid contention. He said, charity is the antidote to contention. Charity is the spiritual gift that helps us to catch, cast off the natural man who is selfish, defensive, prideful, and jealous. Charity is the principal characteristic of a true follower of Jesus Christ, and charity defines a peacemaker. When we humble ourselves before God and pray with all the energy of our hearts, God will grant us charity. President Nelson also urges us with Christ's words, Will ye not now return unto me, and repent of your sins, and be converted that I may heal you. He pleads with us to come unto Christ so yeah. that he can heal us. Whatever questions or problems we have, the answer is always found in the life and teachings of Jesus Christ. Because of his atonement, we shall all be made alive. We will see our loved ones again. And I testify this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. We're now going to have a closing song. Is it the one they've got? <laughs> now let us rejoice. <laughs> okay, and you either use your phones or I think there was a piece of paper for some of you. After the closing song, uh, Nancy's son-in-law, Spencer Lee, will give the closing prayer and as part of the closing prayer he will also dedicate the grave then after he gets through with the prayer and the dedication of the grave sit still for a minute because we have some pallbearers that will then proceed to lower the casket into the grave Thank you. Let will sing now.
Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this opportunity we have to come unto Thee and to remember Nancy Anderson and her her life, her dedication to serving others and to raising a great family, great children with her spouse, Paul Anderson. We are grateful for the opportunity she had on this earth to touch people's lives and to return to thee as a faithful and valiant servant of thee. At this time, we wish to always remember her and take upon ourselves the spirit of service that she always demonstrated and her kindness and her quirkiness and her energy. We ask that we can exemplify that throughout our lives here on earth. And at this time in the by the Melchizedek priesthood, we dedicate this grave. We consecrate this grave for the final resting place of Nancy Stoker Anderson and ask that thou will protect it until the resurrection of thy son. We ask a special blessing on her family, her children, her sisters, and those that are friends and important in her life and were important in her life, those that helped her through her time of need uh, in this mortal life, that they will be, that they will be blessed, that they will remember the life that she lived and we ask that thou will please watch over this grave she lays here with her husband for eternity, Paul Anderson, and we do so in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I think we're now. I think we're now under the direction of our funeral people. Uh, those of you who are pallbearers, you know who you are. If you do, will you stand up? Come up here. And whatever they tell you to do, you do. the rest of the flowers off. Yeah. You know, when you do this, it's kind of like a balancing act, you know, because you got to kind of give this guy a little bit and this guy a little bit. So. Yeah, okay, we have to lift it yeah. high enough <clears throat> to take the boards boards. out. Now, very gently, lower. Now, don't you guys drop yours. You're going to go ahead and pull, and this whole thing is going to come underneath. Okay? So you put her down all the way. Okay, now pull up on that strap. Thank you. 
thank you, everyone. That now concludes the program, and you are free to do talk for a few minutes and then go home.